The time for talk is over. The 2018 World Cup is finally here. Your sweepstakes should be completed, your bets should be on, I've backed Brazil but come on England, and you should all be braced for a summer extravaganza of footballing excellence, kicking off with Russia vs Saudi Arabia, which is set to be a classic World Cup encounter I imagine. Every time there's a major tournament, the footballing cliches come out of the woodwork and will be heard up and down the land, in pubs, in households and on Twitter. So let's take a look at 20 World Cup cliches. How many can you spot during the tournament? Number 1. Someone's got to win it. While factually accurate, the argument of someone's got to win it is not really a logical one when giving your case for England or any other unlikely nation to win the World Cup. While it's great to be optimistic about your country's chances, the likelihood of you winning the World Cup unless you're Brazilian, German, Spanish, French or Argentinian are pretty slim. But someone's got to win it. 2. Get him on the plane. Always a fan favourite when the squads are yet to be announced, with supporters clamouring for their national team managers to give a certain player a place on the plane, as if it's an episode of Ant and Dec's Saturday Night Takeaway. But it's always get him on the plane, not get him in the squad. There's a mythical footballing plane that you can only get on if you're selected for the tournament, while those who didn't get the call must go by train or other means if they intend to travel over the summer. 3. He brings something different. Another questionable thesis from fans when discussing which player should get a place on the plane, the argument that a certain player should be selected because he brings something different, and it's usually an argument reserved for two individuals, Andy Carroll and Peter Crouch. Obviously they're both big strikers who are a handful in the air, and international defenders won't know what to do with themselves, having never encountered someone who is tall. 4. Sweepstakes We mentioned them earlier on, but everyone loves a World Cup sweepstake, especially in office. Everyone chucks in a quid and randomly gets a team for the tournament and whoever has the winning team wins the prize money. A simple and fun way to enjoy the World Cup, unless you're immediately out of the running and draw Australia, effectively just giving away a pound for absolutely nothing. Number 5. The Group of Death Every international tournament, one of the groups has to be billed as the Group of Death, or more accurately, the one that is slightly more difficult than the others. We're all guilty of it, I'm not going to be a hypocrite, I made a whole video on Groups of Death, but let's be honest, no one's going to die, two teams will qualify and two will go home, but the name, the group that is the hardest, doesn't quite have the same edge. Number 6. There are no easy games An absolute lie that managers will tell you, there will in fact be some easy games at the World Cup, despite your manager insisting that the prospect of facing Iran is always going to be tough. When Germany pumped Saudi Arabia 8-0, or when Portugal battered North Korea 7-0, they were both very easy games. While you've got to show respect to your opponents, we can see through the bullshit manager spout. Number 7. The Dark Horse It's a saying that is normally reserved for a team like Croatia. They've got a fantastic team on paper, boasting a couple of top bracket players such as Rakitic and Modric, and could perform well, but unless there's a minor miracle, they're not going to win it, but are described as dark horses just to make it all sound a bit more exciting. But then you'll get those absolute drips on Twitter who'll call Spain a dark horse and you wonder why you even bother. Number 8. World Cup Fever It grips the nation every four years just like swine flu did back in 2009. I've certainly got it, have you? That's World Cup Fever, not swine flu. Number 9. Failed Pronunciations Apparently we're very guilty of that here at HITC Sport according to you lot in the comments, but you just know it's going to be common practice at the World Cup, with so many international players embarking on the tournament who a lot of us will never have heard before or even talked about. It'll even be a problem for commentators who will cover their asses by saying, ooh I hope I'm saying that correctly, bore off Guy Mowbray, I'm trying to watch Japan vs Poland in peace. Number 10. Weather Crack no matter which country the World Cup is in, the weather will always be a hot topic. Us Brits love to talk about the weather. Will it be too hot or will it be too cold? Can the players acclimatise or will a polar bear invade the pitch? Every game, expect to be reminded by commentators what the conditions are like and how they're coping themselves, because apparently we're supposed to care. Number 11. Bored Commentators Ha ha ha, isn't this ironic because apparently I'm really boring. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, it ties into the weather crack, but you just know it'll get to the point when the commentators are bored, usually on the back end of the group stages, and can't even pretend to be enthused by Panama vs Tunisia. If you go on Twitter, there's a cracking video of Mark Lawrence and I think Guy Mowbray, there's two mentions for him, commenting on a game from a previous tournament, and they're both just sick of the lives, it's fantastic. Number 12. Dodgy Pundits while the Premier Games will have the big dogs in to do punditry for either ITV or BBC, there'll be a certain few fixes where even the B team are deemed too high bracket for the fixture. It'll be a Friday afternoon, Nigeria vs Iceland, and none of the pundits will have a clue what to say, other than that isn't Gilfie Sigurdsson good, and remember when John Wood used to play for Chelsea? Number 13. Brazil bring a carnival atmosphere 
every time Brazil are playing, you'll be told about the carnival atmosphere the fans are creating, and while the camera pans to a collection of beautiful women clad out in yellow, seemingly having a fantastic time in Russia. Number 14, the media slang off England 24-7. I mean, just look at the whole Raheem Sterling saga. All the bloke did was get a tattoo of a gun on his leg, one which he'd had for a while anyway, and the sun hounded him for it, leading to the usual mongs like Piers Morgan calling for action, and then Sky Sports News changing Sterling's statement to make it sound like he was a former gun user. It happens every tournament, the press look for any way to disrupt the England camp, then hammer them even more when they don't win. 15 English players are tired, we need a winter break. Cherish this one, as it'll be the last World Cup where we can use the fatigue as an excuse. As soon as the three lines put in a flat performance, the winter break calls come about once again, because apparently that's the reason we haven't won the World Cup since 1966, not the fact we're just not as good as the other countries. Number 16, ooh penalties, they're such a lottery. Yes penalties are a horrible way to end a game of football, especially at a World Cup, but they're definitely not a lottery. Anyone can win the lottery, you just need to buy a ticket and hope your numbers come up, whereas a penalty shooter can be decided by skill, temperament, discipline and in some cases a little bit of luck, but by no means is it a lottery. Number 17, Premier League clubs paying big money for World Cup stars. It's always going to happen, as soon as a rogue player at the World Cup scores a couple of goals or puts in a few decent performances, there will be a queue of Premier League clubs clamouring for their signature. Just look at Ener Valencia 4 years ago, a few goals for Ecuador and West Ham ended up paying 12 million quid for him. Fast forward to 2018, and the last time we saw him, he was running from the law. 18. Will we see the Barcelona Lionel Messi? Ok, so Lionel Messi isn't quite as good for Argentina as he is for Barcelona, but he's still damn good and far better than anyone else at the tournament. Sorry Cristiano Ronaldo fans. Will we see the Barcelona Lionel Messi? No, no we won't, as he isn't playing with his Barcelona teammates, but that doesn't matter, and nor does he need to win the World Cup to be truly recognised as the greatest player of all time. Number 19, the hand of God. Speaking of Argentina, as soon as they begin their 2018 World Cup campaign, the English pundits will be spouting off about the hand of God from 1986, as if they're still aggrieved by the cheating bastard's goal from over 30 years ago, I wasn't even born, I don't care, and it'll be all they talk about if England somehow end up taking on the Argentinians. Then on top of that, there'll be the whole Beckham Simeone incident, it'll be a very boring prelude to the aforementioned Lionel Messi running rings around the England defence. And finally, number 20, what next for England? Copy the winners. Once the tournament is over and England haven't won the World Cup, there'll be the usual stewards inquiry into where the three lines went wrong and how they can rewrite these wrongs in 2022. The usual answer is, copy what the winner did, because that's bound to work. Remember after 2010 and we were told that Spain was the perfect model? How did that work out for them four years later? So those are our World Cup cliches, play along with us at home and see how many you can take off during the tournament and let us know of any more in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.